Here we are yet again, another round, another week. The alternative right here. Hit Vicky TMD on YouTube. What is going on? Colin is back. We missed out for the holidays. I might have put a tweet out and said, hey, don't worry. There'll be an episode of Guess What There Wasn't. Sorry, the holidays came up and shit happened. Sorry, guys. We tried. We tried. But we're doubling up. And we figured if, since we're doubling up on two episodes for the most part, why don't we double up on just voices uh two guests in the house this week are returning in a brand new one to this show but neither neither a stranger to the channel before we get in any of that colin how was your thanksgiving how you been where can everyone catch in all that good stuff it was uh, it was pretty solid pretty solid i eventually got to watch uh AEW and nxt it was nice i built my fire my house back where i live so it made, it made things very difficult which is why we did not have the uh the holiday episode it's funny travis you tweeted the thing out and said like don't worry we're gonna have an episode and i should have messaged you at the time but i didn't but my i i said nothing but in my head i'm like no we're not but you know what if if we do we do but uh, yeah it's good to be back uh check me out on twitter at uber tie guy and uh yeah i really need to get a second thing to plug because it's always awkward when I just plug one thing and just move on. Plug but, uh, the, yeah, plug, the plug the, plug the jacket. Fuck it. Uh, yeah, go to Target, pick up a jean jacket <laughs> and or jacket. <laughs> Colin made me break character already two minutes into the show. Welcome back, man. But like I said, we're not alone. First and foremost, Logan, I know you don't mind ladies first. She's back. We're not talking about Drew McIntyre. You saw her last month on a Bicky High Spots talking about Drew, but this time we asked her, we reached out, just luck the just luck the draw. She just happened to catch AEW this week, so lucky us. I did. At Claymore Chick 95. 95. The boom, I remembered it. Mads, what's going on? Thank you for doing this spur of the moment. I know, I'm excited. I, I was gonna say where yeah, can everyone gonna... catch you, but I just kind of plugged in anyway. Oh, well, thanks for plugging my Twitter. My Twitter is ClaymoreChick95, and my Instagram is ClaymoreChick22, because I have no, I'm just that bad at coming up with inspirational things, so thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, I'm really excited. I did catch AEW, the full show, so hopefully I can add some knowledge onto this part. Pizzazz? Add some pizzazz. I know I was looking for a fancy yeah. word. Colin, are there any Scottish guys on the AEW roster? Uh, Kip Sabian, possibly? Oh, God, he is super, yeah. He, I don't I think he's definitely British. And and Jimmy Havoc, Havoc, he's definitely British. I don't think Jimmy Havoc is from just, Scotland, though. No. No. I and, 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 I, and I just looked it up. Kip Sabian isn't from Scotland. I don't think there is any Scottish. No, not specifically Scottish, but there's definitely dudes from the UK. Well, we're definitely I shooting blanks, but maybe our, our final participant, our other guest, the mastermind, the guy, man, one of the hardest working guys on YouTube, the underrated Logan Myers behind Future Wrestling, over there, Future Wrestling on YouTube, Future Entertainment, all that good stuff, no stranger to this, or Colin and I were talking off air. For the most part, I mean, we started talking about the 205 Live guys about two years ago. This is really, besides maybe a one-off, the first real thing we've done with Colin. Logan? Yep, exactly. It's good to be back. The only time I'm going to be faced right now is glad to be here. There you go. Where can everyone catch you? You guys can check me out on Twitter, at LoganMyers144. And, like Travis said, Future Entertainment, right there on YouTube. Check out FOW. Last time we heard from you on this show, you were filling in for Colin on the prediction show for Full Gear. Good to have you back. Good to be here, guys. It's time. Let's do it. Let's double up. We're not going to go full detail because this is only an hour show for the most part. To be honest, is this a, pretty much across the boards for all this? The ones of us last week that saw the whole episode, was it the worst episode yet of Dynamite last week's show? Colin. Uh, I mean, I just watched last week's uh, show today, actually, uh, a couple hours ago before this. I, and you said something earlier where you said, like, these last two weeks have been, like, the worst so far. And, I mean, I can't necessarily agree. I won't disagree in the sense that maybe they weren't, like, the most exciting. But, I mean, I don't think any episode was bad, necessarily. Is it just a case of Mads? Do you think it's what AEW has kind of set themselves up for for a way? Because it came out of the gate so strong. It's kind of, well, it's a hard act to follow already type deal. Yeah, kind of. Thing. They get so caught up on trying to, like, be better than NXT that stuff gets kind of 
jarbled and they don't focus on like storylines and stuff they just try to push a bunch of stuff out on people and if you tune in like on a random day you have no idea what's going on but i like it and i'm definitely not one of those people that's like aew or nxt i'm like aew and nxt thank you my god that's refreshing to hear jesus christ one of us it's about goddamn like, time. there are certain things in wrestling in general i like more than others but i don't turn against a product just because i don't like something that happens one one day out of the week Luke. so i'm Logan, it's it's come out in the news in the last couple of weeks that AEW's announced that they're only going to do four pay per views a year. Now, yeah, I like that less is more type thing. It's old school. It worked so much better that way back in the day, certain times. But on the other hand, with a new upstart promotion like this, does that leave too much of this in between and borderline stagnant periods? Kind of what it feels like a little bit right now. We're just kind of on standstill to this next pay per view gets closer in a month and a half before anything really gets into motion. Yes, it does. Obviously, uh, I, I think four is two less. I think they need to have bump that up two and make it six. You know what? I, I think six is fair. I think it is. Three. Is this, Go ahead. So, sorry. No, ladies is, first. Is this pay per view bash at the beach the next one that happens? That's more of like a special event that they're doing. I think because that, that's the thing I think they're doing is like. Because from, it's on, it's going to be on a Wednesday, which is just going to be an episode of Dynamite. Um, and from my understanding, at least from what I can predict, I think they'll have the four main pay-per-views where, you know, the bigger stuff will happen, they'll build towards it. But I think in between, they will have episodes where, you know, there's title matches and there's, you know, storylines that might culminate there and stuff like that. So I think it'll be okay having four. I do like the idea... Uh, bumping it up to six, I think six would be a good number, but I, I don't think they'll smoke it if they only have four. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if that, that stagnant type booking feel does come into play or if they up the ante and add more pay-per-views over time. Only time will tell in that kind of thing. For me, an umbrella kind of sentiment over both of these episodes. For me, the one angle, Colin, I don't know about you, but the one I'm truly invested in right now more than any, it, it just comes off because it feels like it gets more just umph put behind it than any other is Cody and MJF by far. Absolutely. No, that's that's a uh, fantastic feud going on right now. Uh, definitely one of the ones that they've been uh, building up to um, in each episode. I, I will fault AEW for, for one thing. They've, uh, and this is, I you know, getting into last week's episode and this week's, they put a, a video out on um, on Twitter, either MJF did himself, AEW, one of the two, where it was revealed that MJF is the one who hired uh, the Butcher and the Blade and everything like that. And they haven't mentioned that on TV yet, I believe. Should have. But that, yeah, but that and that's information that, you know, would make sense to tell us mm. and everything like that. And that's and like that's the thing I fault AW for is they I think they rely too much on their internet presence that they think everyone is going to see every tweet or every every episode of being the elite stuff like that and you know that leads to some information being lost and i and this won't be the first time i talk about this uh with the shows there's other stuff that they've mentioned on being the elite stuff like that that is a good thing to know it on the show even dark really shanna I feel like I just happened to catch an episode of Dark like last week, and the and the, and the reason I know shit about Shannon is because I just randomly caught that episode. Right. You know. Yeah. She was she the girl that got thrown through the table this week by Nyla Rose? No. That was the that was just the referee of the match, I think. Oh, but she okay. was she was there. She was in yes. that match, right? She also, oh yeah, she was the one who saved. Um, Leave a bait after yeah. the match. That, yeah. Yeah, the blonde chick. Right? Yeah. See, and okay. they, see, if you would have called Dark, you would have known that she was rejected and put down by WWE at the Performance Center, and that they said she looked didn't look good. She was too short and fat, and all this stuff. And it was a great fucking vignette that I'm actually glad I saw. But be, before this, exactly what you said. Oh, that blonde chick. That's all I would have fucking registered. What <laughs> if I saw her? Yeah, that's you know bad. what I mean? That's, um. Yeah. 
let, let, let's get down to the brass tacks. But right off the bat, we haven't talked about it at all. The butcher, the bunny, the Logan, the blade. Excuse me. What do you got? I what? Allie was fine. I mean, I don't know. Is it me? She's still hot. <laughs> I'm going Calm to- down, Brad <laughs> Shepard. Uh, uh, Colin, what do you initially? Because I, not that idiot. I feel like if anyone oh, on this en- entire panel is going to be into this, it's going to be Colin. So what do you think? Uh, I I'm a very easy fucking book to read. Apparently, I mean, I I, I think the Butcher and the Blade in two weeks have gathered my interest way faster than the Dark Order have. To be fair, these new vintages the Dark Order have have, have piqued my interest. I, I'm kind of you know, I'm interested to see where they go. And I, I like the uh, vignettes. With the, I know I've completely switched from Butcher to Blade. I'll circle back to it, I promise. Um, you better. Well, I, <laughs> I, <laughs> the, uh, with with, the, with the, the Dark Order's vignettes, it's very cool to see each vignette is like a, it's a, a story advance on the previous vignette. You don't see that a whole lot in wrestling. Um, and, yeah, back with uh, the Butcher and the Blade, I, I saw their debut uh, today. When I watched last week's episode, uh, it definitely came off on TV a lot weaker than I, I thought it did on uh, Twitter when I was seeing everything unfold. Because on the inter- on, on Twitter and stuff like that, it seemed like it was a pretty big deal. And when I watched it back on TV, it was like, oh, no one really knew what was going on. And that's yeah, too- let's that's just blame it. Jim Ross, by the way. Don't mean to cut <laughs> you off. I mean, yeah, Jim Ross probably had no idea what was going on anyways, but does he ever? No, yeah, point? I mean... Cause... But yeah, I mean, I, I, but as, as, like I said earlier, the, if they were hired by M. Jeff, I, I think the way he de- they debuted was a good way to debut them in that case. But on this past episode, they should mention that hey, we're with M. Jeff, or just something along those lines if they want to, you know, advance this whole storyline because they're going after Cody Rhodes. That much is clear. But if you didn't know that they were hired by M. Jeff. At this point, I'm sure a lot of people think this is just a separate storyline going on. They're like, well, why is F. Jeff going after Cody, and why are these guys going after Cody? This doesn't make any sense. Better together. But no one fucking knows that. I, I was so happy when MJF turned on Cody. I watched that whole match, and I'm not a fan of Jericho or Cody, so I waited for that whole match, that whole 15, whatever it was in a match waiting for him to turn on him <laughs> like pretty much the only reason i watched that match was hoping that that was going to be the day he turned on him and it really wasn't a turn it was literally just a low blow kick in the nuts and there could have been so much more he's I mean, throwing... to be fair if my friend kicked me in the nuts I would probably not be friends with him either, so <laughs> I would say it was a pretty easy thing to deal for. You know, but yeah, no, the, the butcher and the blade. I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm a very easy person to, to to please. I'm more than willing to give this a shot. I like the characters, so. We'll see where it goes. Actually, the yeah. more Logan, the more I think about it, I'm shocked Colin didn't think this was blasphemous because he's like the world's biggest Switchblade Jay White fan, and he's got a tattoo of the blade. <gasps> Oh my gosh. Yeah, and yes, Colin, you are easy to please. Just give you a coloring book. Ooh. It's fair. Ooh. You are healed this week. <laughs> oh my. Logan with the hot takes already. No, I mean, there, there's just something about the way it, it's coming off. And, and I know these were only on the being elite thing too, but if you did catch the things with MJF on Cody Rhodes, you got a lot more in depth on the mentor type deal they were going with. And that's go right back to it, Colin. They didn't show that enough. I mean, they definitely did. Uh, like they mentioned it enough. That now they like are people. Yeah, they well, they get the idea. Like, they they understand they were best friends and stuff like that. But I mean, yeah, no, they definitely they advance a lot of stuff on being the elite and stuff like that, and that's all well and good. But like they don't, I'm sure they don't get the kind of views that would. Um, you know, justify being able to not mention these kind of things on TV. Yeah. Flat out, my opinion on the Butcher, the Bunny, and the Blade real quick. I think I think the, it came off terribly on TV because the crowd even chanted, who are you? There was no reaction at all. Nothing. Crickets. You get your fucking pen drop. That didn't help it. To take, 
I mean, Allie's the only one that's known, but she had a mask on. I mean, the live crowd obviously didn't know that was Allie. I mean, if, if they even did, it was not until she was making her exit because, I mean, you know what I mean? The other two guys, to have two completely unknowns like that in such a prominent type deal with no explanation, if you're going to milk it slow, I mean, you, you got to have some credibility in it, especially when it just is, let's say it, in my opinion, another generic-ass fucking, we're wearing leather jackets, let's beat everybody up gimmick and hang out because we're buddies. They're definitely overdoing the kind of like dark and mysterious things. Yes. They have the Butcher, the Blade, and the Bunny. They have... The Dark Order, they have whatever the fuck Randy Rhodes. The Rode. Nightmare Collective. Them. We'll get there. The we will yeah, fucking I get like there. The name. I like the name, to be fair. But the idea behind it is just, I, I mean, it's just, they're doing this all at once, and they're doing it with so much that it's like, great, stick them all in a triple threat match, let the winner stay, give the others new gimmicks. Here's my hottest take that might shock some people, it might impress Colin. I like the monocle. A lot of people, oh, the monocles aren't over, blah, blah, blah. It's different. It stood out to me more than anything in the group is the monocle. Sorry, but I like it. The guy looks insane. It works on him. That's the one thing I like about this group is the butcher. His look. That's it. Yeah, the other guy is kind of weird looking. I don't get the He's Jason Statham. <laughs> well, Logan, what do you think of this group? Well, uh, like you said, they're different. And people are going to complain no matter what. Let them complain, because for the people who actually know the product, we're going to enjoy it. Are you on like a motorcycle now or something? Or like in the sky? <laughs> like the sound changed when you started talking. In the sky. I mean, you just made a hell of a sound bite, but still you sound like you're like riding a bike or something. No. I don't know. We will see uh, what becomes of this whole thing. And you make a great point because that's exactly what I thought, Colin. I watched both of these episodes in the last two weeks. Too many, it's kind of what NXT had problem with it for a while when Aleister Black and Sanity was there. Too many dark gimmicks. That's why Taker was so great back in the day. He was the only one like that for the most part. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. It's a seven-hour walk to the... And <laughs> Mads, MJF, Adam Page last week. The crossroads heard around the world. What a scary moment that botch was. Holy shit. I mean, yeah, that was scary. is it is I mean, accidents happen, bad days at the office happen. I, I saw people coming out, well, we maybe you should have scouted MJF and see if he could actually wrestle first. Um, MLW has existed for a while and he can wrestle. It was a bad day at the office. We'll get there later with Daniels. Just a scary moment. Like, I literally, I was just immediately, that. how does that not look like Hangman Page at least had a stinger, you know? Yeah, and there was also a, um, a moment, apparently, in this week when Sammy Guevara went up on the top rope to do, like, that weird thing with his cell phone thing. Like, I keep seeing it, and the Bucks, like, did the super kicks. Was it all three of them? Was it Dustin in the box yeah. and they did the super kick thing? Yeah. Dustin couldn't lift his leg up that high to save his life. Oh, see, I didn't see that. <laughs> and I had no idea what the big deal was. And it's good to get another perspective of that. Because I saw that and I'm like, what are these people bitching at? Like, I for see. <laughs> but he's also 50 years old. For sure. I was. <laughs> did not, not mean to cut you off. But I, would, I would say it was a bad two weeks for some botches. Uh. Travis and uh, back to that uh, the crossroads. I saw that match today. Not a bad match. I you know I mean it wasn't the greatest. I, I'm sure. I don't think M. Jeff and Hangman Page have have done a whole lot of matches together. So I mean not the greatest match, but I mean it wasn't bad either. But I didn't notice. I've seen. I saw the gif of the crossroads for a, a week straight since it happened. I didn't notice until watching the match just how bad. Hangman Page just lands right on his head. I, I didn't notice that until, until I watched it live. That was rough. When I go back and watch this, Logan, I still don't know what the fuck happened either. I still don't get like what the miscommunication was. It's that bad of a botch. Uh, when I saw it, the first thing that pops in my mind is maybe that's what they wanted you to see. Oof. That's playing with literal fire, dude. Especially with someone so young and has such an upside like Paige. I don't think that was planned. No fucking way. I mean, I I thought the same thing in the sense that it could have been. If it was done, if, okay. If it wasn't for that awkward, like, push where M. Jeff was, like, pushing Paige's body over him to pin him, it would have looked like a devastating move. 
and it would have been a great finish. But because of that awkward kind of like push over that made it obvious that it wasn't quite planned that way, that's what made the moment, you know, so awkward and everything. And I don't even know if I saw this. You guys are talking about last week. Literally type it in like your Google machine or Twitter machine. Just put Adam Page botch or MJF yeah, botch. Thank you so it. much. That hurts I'm, my heart. I'm, I'm glad you brought up that one point, Travis, though, because I saw the same thing from all the same people saying, like, oh, I guess they should have checked to see if MJF could wrestle before making him this big guy. He can. You guys are just nitpicking everything, and it's it's the problem with... It's both sides, too, I, dude. I, at, the, at this point, it's both right. of you. You're, folk, you're all fucking annoying. Let us, the ones who just want to watch wrestling, if it's good, watch it. Yes, that's how I am about wrestling, and those idiots it drive me nuts. Sorry, Colin. <laughs> Continue your, your preach. I didn't mean to... So, well, no, that's, that was basically what I was getting at. It's like, like we understand. And, like, you can't watch wrestling and not expect botches to happen. They're human beings. Like, yeah, they're, like, my, my simple thing is every time someone mentions about something that minuscule, it's like, you go try it a couple of times and see how good you are at it the first time. The celebration of Le Champion and all that shit... Virgil Soul Train, Jones, Ted Irvin, hockey legend, a half full arena, and a lot of laughs for this. A lot of people giving it shit for knocking off the festival of friendship and yada yada. Can I can I just enlighten people again on the nitpicking thing? Can I just do this? This this even sums up the Marco stunt argument. This sums it all up in one little vacuum. Okay, you guys ready for this groundbreaking shit I'm about to drop on you? You ready? It's wrestling. It's fucking wrestling. If I want to go watch an amateur wrestling meet for eight hours, because that's how fucking long they are and be bored to tears, I'll go do that. We watch wrestling to escape reality. The problem is, it's bad when it's overdone. When it's sprinkled in with fucking Ted Irvin, it's fine. I liked it. I didn't expect him to be a renaissance man on the goddamn mic. People shitting on the promo. Again, it's Ted Irvin. It was supposed to be bad. It Just like the shit with Jungle Boy this week about as soon as that happened, my God, the same fucking picture of Jungle Boy's record on Twitter I have seen more times than I hopefully, hopefully never see that again. That was the point of the promo. Are we watching it or literally just having our fingers on the pulse, Colin, at this point for attention? I mean, and the thing is, it's the fact that AW is so new and it's the people who made it, and it's the, you know, hype it's gotten, and it's all these people that, like, oh, they just do flippy shit, and it's the people who are the WWE diehards who they want to see them fail. So anytime they do something that they don't understand off the bat, they're going to bitch and moan about it. And I agree, and I'm, Travis, we're on the same page exactly. The thing with Jungle Boy, I saw the same thing today. It's like, oh, he's 0-8, and, and I'm like, yeah. Did you not see the whole fucking thing where he lists off all the people he's not going to wrestle and he's not going to pick and the fact that he's a heel champion so he's, if he gets to pick his challenger obviously he's going to pick someone who he knows he can beat? It's right fucking there. Literally. And these people it, are so stupid to not see these kind of things. Literally. Like to see the upset though. I'm, I, oh, I'd like, love it. If, I'd love it if Jungle Boy beat him. That oh, and I know the internet would go fucking nuts. And so I'm really here for that. Maybe I wouldn't be so I wouldn't be so guns blazing about it, Logan, if Jericho in his promo didn't literally say you don't have any wins. And on commentary, that didn't drive home the fact that Jungle Boy has no wins. It's a ten minute open challenge. It's not the main event of goddamn all out. No, it's not. It's not. Oh, yeah, Ted Irvin. We're not there yet. I'm just so fucking fed up with the bullshit I'm reading, but people not actually watching. That's where I'm at. But yeah, the the set the celebration thing with Jericho last week. Real quick, Logan, your two cents on it for what you saw. Uh, I saw a lot of bubbly. It's true. <laughs> I was kind of jealous of the bubbly. Chris Jericho retweeted me on Thanksgiving. I was like, oh shit, I oh, yeah. can't shit talk him too much anymore. <laughs> I feel weird. He's a he's a contradicting guy to be a fan of. Sometimes you love him. Sometimes he's a fucking dick. Jericho's weird. I don't weird. think I've ever liked him. Same with Cody Rhodes. And now I like What a heel. Sorry. What a heel. Damn right. <laughs> he is. And it was like, oh, damn. Shit. Now I, like, can't shit talk him too much. It's like, hey, no, I tweeted it. 
he pretty much made you silent because of that. Yeah, it, I was it, like, I'll suck. If I ever shit, take shit talk, people are going to be like, oh, you were excited that he retweeted you. I'm like, yeah, because he's first fucking Jericho. No shit. Like, I mean, shit, Natalia follows me on Twitter, and I still was rooting for Lacey Evans during the rivalry, so, so. <laughs> yeah, people get so nitpicky about that. Same with John Cena following me. It's like, people hey, follow you? Yeah. <laughs> John Cena also <laughs> follows me, so suck my dick, Logan. Pete Dunn is literally on this channel, so I will never say an ill word to this man. And the first person that does, oh, I'm hitting Pete the red Dunn. button. Pete. Yeah. Um. Never mind. Does Pete Dunn? Does Pete Dunn follows me? My Twitter life would be. I, you got. It's safe to say, as far as this whole celebration thing with Jericho last week. I think it's fair to say this was the most glaringly noticeable time that the arenas aren't as packed as they were. And I hate to say, Colin and I told you so from since day one. And I feel like the cons and Cody aren't hitting the panic button right now. This, it, 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 They knew this was kind of going to dwindle a little bit. They had to. Well, the thing is... And it's on a Wednesday! I, I know, so I know plenty of people are just going to be like, Oh, that's the excuse, Paul. I'm like, well, it's not an excuse if it's true. I mean, yeah, they're, they're, before I get to this other point, yeah, they're not panicking, probably because they're like, okay, yeah, we've been around for 10 weeks. Obviously, people who don't know us in the area aren't, like, people don't have to watch WWE to see an advertisement for their show and want to go. Like, they, like, Plenty of people probably used to watch wrestling. They're like, hey, I don't know a single one of these people, but I'm going to go to this WWE show because that's it's a household, you know, brand people recognize. Right. I mean, I mean, the, the, roster, the roster hasn't sold out of WrestleMania, and Jesus Christ, it's getting scary almost 15 years. It's the brand that sells WrestleMania. Let's be honest. Right. Yeah. But the other problem is, and I know this, this might come as a shock to some people, and I'm sorry if you think it's not true, but you're wrong. It was Thanksgiving. People are traveling. People are with their families. Yeah. They're not going to. They're not going to, you know, go to this wrestling show if they have anything else to do with their families that are in town, or if they're traveling and stuff like that. I'm not surprised. Most holiday shows of any kind of wrestling show don't have a tremendously great attendance because it's the holidays. On the other hand, the diehards are going to find a way to go no matter what, and I feel like. I, I don't feel like these arenas are just strictly diehards. You do see a lot of kids in there, and you do see families at these shows. Not as obviously as many as the Big W, but uh, I, I just want to throw two statements out there real it. quick. Go for it. The crowd from Thanksgiving was probably majority of them was early Christmas presents to the kids. Let's just be fair. Oh, maybe. Uh, what if they're Jewish, right. Logan? Never know. Never know. Eight right. eight days of dynamite across the world. <laughs> Another statement I want to throw, and I hate agreeing with you, Colin, but every wrestling company is in panic mode right now, including WWE. I don't think WWE is in panic mode ever since the sweet Saudi money. I think they always are, no matter what. I think WWE is in a point right now. This is my honest 100%. I know it's not a WWE show, but two seconds on it. They are sitting pretty more than ever. There's never been a more glaring time, and they don't give a shit what they're force-feeding out booking-wise than ever right now. They don't care that they're giving us Lana and this Rusev shit. They don't give a fuck because they don't have to care because they're making money over fists no matter what they pump out. It doesn't yeah. matter. They're still making the money, so they don't care. They're honestly, the Wednesday night war, quote unquote, is just a fucking rich bully on the schoolyard picking on someone he doesn't even have to pick on, to be honest. Yeah, but AEW likes to throw, well, I will shouldn't say AEW likes to throw a lot of shots, which they do, don't get me wrong, they do, but apparently that little uh, promo package that they had for AEW on TNT. Yeah, let's just I'm let's just rip that band aid off real right, quick. Right, let's, yeah. let's call it what it was. AEW was not saying themselves, hey, we're kicking NXT's ass, blah blah blah, we're so much better. It was the magazines and the the what I the words lost me, but like it's these places that it was Quotes. their reviews that AEW was putting on. Do you think those are real? No, they definitely are. They can't just forge those kind of things. <laughs> it was from Brad Shepard. Let's just be honest. Either either way, it, it was. it's not wrong to do. It's bold. It's bold marketing. Companies fucking do this shit all the time. Yes. 
Yes, it's like Sony versus, you know, Microsoft. For, for Xbox and PlayStation. There you go, fans of this channel. Let's take a little trip back. Sega and Nintendo, all their ads were name dropping each other. Every fucking exactly. ad. There you go. Vaping cigarettes. That's people great. people just make a big fuss over nothing anymore because everyone's been so bored that's been fans of pro wrestling unless they're diehard New Japan fans because pro wrestling has sucked for years. That's the problem. And finally, there's some buzz. There's some consistent... NXT came along, and I feel like just, I don't want to say save the wrestling business, but when NXT became what it is today, with that little tidal wave from like 2014 to now, it's pretty much what's been keeping people our age just around for the most part. Yep. Either way, <laughs> ranty, ranty, ranty this week. <laughs> you know, it's it's quite funny. Would you? How we're, we're not really ranting about AEW or WWE. Last time I mentioned WWE. We're ranting more about the fans. Dropping knowledge on the these toxic fans. Toxic fans. The toxic Colin, what'd you think of Paige and uh, MJF real quick and the whole DDP stuff after? And Warlow, Rocky by his favorite wrestler. Uh, real quick, I want to talk about the uh, the opening to the last week's episode. Uh, actually, I, I just want to say, I liked it. I, I didn't get the, uh, I never saw anything comparing it to the Festival of Friendship. I, I just I looked at it as a totally different thing. Um, I will say I do want to know how long Ted Irvine stayed in that box before he got revealed. I feel like to notice how long he was just sitting in the darkness with the with that duffel bag of jerseys and like, cocaine. He was like triple uh, layering it too with like a jersey, t shirt, polo shirt. He was hot under there. Right. Uh, I will also say I think AEW needs to stop bringing animals <laughs> into this situation. Yes, that's terrible. That, that, that goat looked fucking terrified. <laughs> yeah, just there. like they did with Pharaoh in a because the first well, I mean, let it was. Your dog was a stupid decision, also. Like Pharaoh's probably fine in other cases, but don't don't just uh, yeah, scare them. Or there's like, pyro and shit like that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Breaking news: coming FOW Lord of the War. Beautiful. Beautiful. Um, yeah, anyways, the, um, the, back to the MJF and uh, Page match. Not a terrible match, aside, aside from the ending. Uh, I like the DDP pop. I, I love Diamond Dallas Page. He's great. Um, real quick tangent, just because I it, I always laugh when I think about the DDP in this case. Uh, I remember my friend and I were watching uh, Royal Rumble when it was happening, and there was the Rumble that Diamond Dallas Page was in. And he came out, and we we were like, hey, it's DDP. And this was also the rumble that Zack Ryder returned in from uh, rotator cuff surgery. And for some fucking reason, Zack Ryder's music hit me and my friend lost our fucking minds. And I'm sure Travis is having a stroke as I say that sentence. But I I'm having a fucking stroke. I'm actually like every other regular wrestling fan. When he said Zack Ryder, I completely tuned out. And that's why I have a Zack Ryder tattoo. And... <laughs> And who the, who the fuck is MJF? It's MJF. Get it right. Oh, everyone, I wasn't going to correct that. Yeah, I everyone, really fucking said, everyone fucking says MJF. Logan is the yeah. gatekeeper of names, though. You got to give like, it to him. Yeah. He, he came up with the uh, the almighty Junkie Janella. So there you go. Jesus Christ. Yes. Oh, anyway. Uh, That's the one that gives me cornet to, like, flashbacks. Gross. Let's not talk about him. Uh, anyways, back to, uh, back to the thing. I like the ring. Ring is cool. No fucking idea if it's going to be anything after this whole thing. I think they just wanted to give MJF some kind of big victory to solidify him into this feud with Cody Rhodes. Yeah, um, yeah Warlof came out. Uh, Rocky's, favorite, uh, Rocky's favorite wrestler, apparently. Shout out, Rocky. Three weeks! Three weeks in a row we've mentioned him for Rocky. He's not an edible loaf. He's a man. Stop calling him Ward Loaf every I week. Never, Lord I, will of never, war. I will never not call him Ward Loaf because that's what I thought his name was and that's going <laughs> to stick with it forever. Oh <laughs> I'm going to have a stroke before this damn sh It's what I'm here for. Uh, I, I, I want to see I want to see him wrestle. That's the thing. I have no idea who this guy is outside of the vintages that I saw a while ago and the fact that he wears a suit and has my old haircut. That's all I know about the guy. I have no idea if he can wrestle. I'm interested to see, you know, what happens there and to see if it actually happens. Um, David Arquette? What? 
I already did WCW 2000 this week, damn it. Please don't take me back there, Logan, please. Also, man, we're, I can't real. I just realized how long we're going this week, and we still got a whole other little thing here to talk about. The, the main event last week, real quick, what did you think, um, Colin? Uh, the uh, match between uh, Jericho and Scorpio. Yeah, yeah. Uh, pretty solid. I liked it, and they definitely gave it a lot of time. Uh, I know I do this with everything. Real quick, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that earlier in the show. Uh, they were in Chicago. Uh, God bless this fucking crowd. I don't think they chanted CM Punk. I was very impressed. They were too uh, exhausted, too, because of the weekend they just sat through. Probably. <laughs> uh, I, I will say um, I, I like it when I see indie wrestlers that I followed for a while finally getting to do something big. Uh, Cody's opponent, Matt Nix, the guy I followed for a while now, really excited that I got that he was on that show. That was weird. I was really, I was really psyched for the freelance wrestling chant during that match because the Chicago, because that's his own promotion that he owns. Uh, I, I just thought that was really cool. It, it, it shows that like fans at the show, they know who these people are sometimes at least, so they're not always completely lost. It was so random so, but, too. It, it just caught me off guard to showcase Cody like that in an enhancement match. Right, right. Um, yeah, but back to the uh, the main event. Uh, yeah, I liked it. Uh, I, I, crowd was firmly behind Scorpio Sky. Uh, I think the ending was a bit uh, deflating, so to speak. I think they should have ended it on the pin. Uh, I, I'm not a huge fan of submission victories when they come in the way it did. It just it just felt a bit like off to me. Uh, but other than that, yeah, I thought it was a good match. Uh, I'm glad they gave Scorpio Sky an opportunity. I think he he clearly proves he can be a single star, and that he'll probably be AEW champion one day. Mads, have you seen a lot of Scorpio Sky? I was about to say, I want her opinion on him. I like him. It was good to see kind of the underdog go against somebody like Chris Jericho. It was cool. And I'm going to keep saying this, but anybody who could beat Chris Jericho would be great, in my opinion. But I'm really excited to see... My Fox versus Chris Jericho, which is obviously something they're kind of pushing at this point. Anybody can beat Chris Jericho besides promos. I just never liked him. He's good, and he's good, and same with Cody. Like, Cody's promo this week killed, but I just, I never was a fan of them. Like, I'll give them props for what they do, and they're uh, both super talented people but I just never was a fan of them in WWE, and it's like, so I can't get behind them in AEW, just out of principle, I guess. Guys, make so. sure, hurry up, the Christmas is coming, get those orders in for Funko Pops of Cody and Jericho for Mads, before it's too late. Yeah, I I'm collect gonna... wrestling, I collect wrestling pops, so honestly, just add them to the, if you if you get them and you and you film them like on your phone camera or whatever, just film them and like burn them. I'll put it on the channel. <laughs> yeah, Travis, like, I I've told you this before. It's a it's a pop quiz. Who is the one wrestler I have a pop vinyl of? I don't know. Fucking shit! Uh, you just told me this the other week. I'm. It's Enzo late. Amore. No. Nope. No. No. Damn it. No. God it's damn it! Uh, it's late. It's late. Who is it? Eva Marie. That's right. Damn it, I knew that. Fuck. And by the way, that's your Christmas presents, water boy. Pop. <laughs> Colin and I, I think we challenged ourselves to get each other like the worst thing on WWE Shop for Christmas or something. Or you did that or some. I don't know. I forget. It all blurs together after episode after episode. Anyway, um, I thought last week's main event it was all right. It was. It was. <sighs> I don't know. It, like I said, it, I didn't expect really Scorpio Sky to win it. I didn't. I, I don't know if I didn't like the finish like you, Colin. I was like, I was okay with it. You know what I mean? For sure. But I, I feel like there's definitely a lot to work with with Scorpio Sky there, and I feel like we'll get to it in a little bit. I promise here with the Christopher Daniels boss. But if they go that route and kind of book the rest of Christopher Daniels' tenure in AEW is just let that old old cowboy out for one last hurrah type deal. You see Scorpio Sky make a very good heel down the road if he has a good mouthpiece because that's still my biggest criticism. He sucks on the mic. Sorry. Like Cedric Alexander. Mm-hmm. There it is. That was that was the Thanksgiving 
spooktacular for AEW Dynamite. Uh, this week's episode Jonathan, of Dynamite. You have a streak of missing over a match that I feel like is big enough to talk about, not in depth, but like go enough ahead. to mention, and you do it every week. I go for it. You you completely skipped over Kenny Omega versus Pac. Ah, I was so excited. I you know why I feel like mentally I, I did that because I feel like it's the exact same match we got at the uh, the last the, uh, all out. Something yeah. like that. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, Even yeah, that was, kick to the corner, like, everything was paint by numbers the same match for me. I don't know. I love Pack. I feel like I mean, it, it was definitely a match where, yeah, no, it was, um, it was, it was kind of like the. I think they were tied, and this was the tiebreaker. Um, yeah, it's not that big of a deal, but you know, worth mentioning. Was, and that's not to say I think it was I mean, a bad match. I just feel like they I watched the same match twice. Maybe that's why I forgot about. Oh, see, I love Pac. I feel like I'm the only person. No, 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 like, you're not because it's documented on this show since day one. He's been my favorite guy in AEW. I still want them to go the route of him as a baby face vigilante like a Sting or a Steve Austin, a one man army against the inner circle. That's my dream angle in AEW. Do it, you cowards. This week's AEW Dynamite episode, in my opinion, was a little bit better than that one. Yeah, it was good. Oh. That, uh, it sure as fuck. My info from Twitter most of the time. It's surprising I that I, th- I I thought I would say that because I feel like it sure as hell is one of the worst ways they've kicked off Dynamite and ring wise. I loathed almost eighty fucking percent of this kicking this match that kicked off Dynamite this week. The six man, the Young Bucks, Dustin Rhodes against uh, the Inner oh. Circle. I and I, I didn't want to. I wanted to like it because I like Dustin dressed up as a young buck. I I got it. That was it funny. I was it started off all right, but then it just became. Oh, there it is. Here we go again. I, I definitely, I definitely did pop huge for the fact that uh, uh, Dustin Rhodes was wearing uh, the, the same boots as the young bucks. That was pretty big. Uh, I'll, give, I'll give my opinion on the match real quick. Uh, to no surprise, I didn't hate the match. I, it definitely wasn't, you know, like, you know, a match people will be talking about after, you know, today. But, yeah, I, I will say, you know, the elephant in the room, really the only thing worth talking about with this match. Uh, that fucking angle they used for the Sammy Guevara spot where he was using his, he was filming the vlog for, quote, being the inner circle, end quote. And he does the flip into this the double super kick on TV. This was just the worst fucking thing I have ever seen in my life, and I don't know why it took um, Sammy Guevara so long to tweet that that video. That shows that Matt was still on the ground when he left the top turnbuckle. Granted, he was obviously looking up, his elbows were ready, and he was going to stand up. But at least yeah. it, it – they were trying to show, like, okay, it isn't a completely choreographed spot. Because, I mean, on, on TV, it straight up looked like he was looking at two standing young bucks and was like, yeah, this will work, and just backflipped into a super kick. I'll come clean. I shat on it at first because of the way it was shot, the camera angle. I completely gave Sammy Guevara shit, and then I saw what actually happened. And Logan, again, my biggest complaint about this company is their goddamn production value. The audio sucks more times than not. The cam- yeah, the breaks are sporadic right. sometimes. They don't make sense. What What do you think? I know you got a lot to say about this. You were DMing my shit earlier about the Sammy Guevara stuff. What's your take on this? I got heat for actually mentioning that the audio was really bad. Oh, it was ridiculous. And so they were saying the only one. That, yeah. I, I do want to point out the audio was not AEW's fault. It it was TNT's fault. And I, I I feel like it's worth mentioning in the day and age where if AEW makes one mistake, the whole company's you know being set on fire and burned in a fucking basket. Whereas WWE has production trucks. You're saying that that's on them. Right. Hey, I'm. I, no, I'm I'm serious. Is it more of a case of it's not in USA's hands? It would be WWE's hands if the audio issues are a thing, or that's on USA. I, I mean, I, I really, I mean, we're I Fox really, now. We're on Fox now. How did I forget? I would, I would say it really just does. It comes down to whose fault it really was, because I assume WWE has their own production 
Yeah, well, I mean, obviously they fucking do. Uh, you know, they all have their own production value, stuff like that. But the, the cable company itself also, you know, is a part of that. So, yeah. Yeah. E- either way, this is totally just to, just what. Just like, blame the camera angles. That's it. That's all I'll say. Not always, but this one you can, I feel like. Yes, you can. That's what. Yep. Exactly. Either way, it's not going to stop me from this match pissing me the fuck off. Why is Matt Jackson doing power spots? Why is he double Northern Light Suplex and two guys when he looks like X Pac? Why? That makes. I get it. I, I, you want to pop the crowd, brother, and you want to do all this shit, but the, at the expense of what? Believability? Just Because immediately when I saw that, and, and this is from someone that is the fairest fucking fan in the world. I'll give anything a chance. But when you do shit like that, I'm just like, jeez. And he was going to go for a th- on all three guys until it was stopped. And before it was interfered, he was probably going to do it. And I'm just sitting there, Jesus Christ. But... There were some, I did love Dustin Rhodes doing a high spot. I off the apron, the cannonball, all bombs away. His attempt at a Terry Funk moonsault was hilarious. Um, other than that, man, just tons of psychology flaws in this shit for me. I'm not going to get all cornet on it and wax intellectual, but you can see why, without me even saying the things in this match, you think would piss me off. It did. It, it flat out did. Um, I, I want to say this too, real quick. The AEW needs to do something real fast. I don't. I don't really think it's the theme music, but I think it's the Titan Trons because until you saw a picture of Dustin Rhodes on that Titan Tron, there was no reaction when that theme music hit. And there was the tight and the music played for almost like I don't know twenty seconds. It felt like forever. You saw like on the Titan Tron this slow scrolling lettering, but it was too zoomed in. You couldn't tell. And that happened a lot throughout this show and a lot in AEW where the people because it's new and. The, I, they just don't know. You got to have some kind of visual, some kind of, is it too much to ask for some Photoshop bold text of who's coming out? At least while the company's early until they're established and the music is in people's minds more. You know what I mean? Yeah. One last hot take about the inner circle. Sammy is going to be like the Randy Orton of evolution. G- Jim Ross was jizzing all over Sammy on this, by the way, just putting him <laughs> over like, I my know. God. I'm, I'm hanging up. You know what I'm saying? I mean, didn't he, didn't he refer to Sammy as like something about Eddie Guerrero? Yeah, it reminds me of young Eddie Guerrero. This kid is the future of the business. Yeah, it's like what? Like, I like Sammy Guerrero, but it was like, how do you put that two and two together? Colin, how do you think Excalibur's doing still? Do you think he's he's decreasing in quality? Or you think he's just getting more seasoned, getting better? I think Excalibur is doing great. I think he's one of the better commentators in the game today. I think if it's not for him, if it was just Jim Ross and Tony Schiavone, I don't think the commentary team would be as good. I think... Ex- uh, not to miss Tony Schiavone. Tony Schiavone is great also. I, but I think Excalibur does a great job as the play-by-play guy. I feel like he does okay, He does fine still on play-by-play. My biggest thing is that they do it backwards. They have Jim Ross and Tony Schiavone kind of pitch pitch an announcement or say like Excalibur give it to him and tell him what it's going to be it should be the other way around because I feel like when you do that he's a younger guy you can totally tell when they do that and put him in that spot where he has to announce something he stumbles a little bit maybe it's nerves but I mean Jim Ross and Tony have been doing this for decades just have them do it have them do the sound bites for Christ's sakes what do you guys think about all the hoopla over him wearing a mask on TV people like they're up I mean you can't really complain about that when you've praised two guys who wore a crown in the cowboy hat for 20 years. Logan? <laughs> yeah, true. Oh, man. I mean, Jerry the King Lawler, he has a gimmick. And it, he, no one, no one bats. I mean, granted, he was a wrestler beforehand, so it's understandable. He, but, you know, I don't think, I don't think it's too far-fetched and, and off-putting for some commentators to have their own kind of gimmick. It Dude, the, the, that's them apart. Flat out, here's some fucking truth if anybody doesn't like it. I don't know what to tell you because it is the truth. The greatest of all time, Bobby Heenan, was a walking goddamn gimmick. So there you go. Yep, definitely. Jesse the Body Ventura was a gimmick in the commentary booth, for Christ's sakes. I'm Macho Man gimmick. Randy Savage, Roddy Piper, it's fine. It's wrestling again. We're back to that thing. I'm a gimmick. Boom. Ray Phoenix and Trent, what would you think of this match, Mads? Uh, was that this week? I don't know if I dropped that one. I did, I will admit, I did fast forward through some stuff that didn't catch my eye. But I did watch a little bit of it. And I do, I, 
I've never seen Ray Phoenix before. That was cool. He's part of the Lucha Bros. Lucha Bros, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, other than that, I'm not so sure about them. <laughs> I'm kind of relatively new to sitting down to watching AEW every week. Colin, it's, can can you so. see them planting seeds with Beretta for an eventual heel turn? This much like spotlight shine he's been getting because he's putting in some under like underrated matches. I feel like. And I Trent Beretta is fantastic. I I loved all of his work it, when he was in New Japan Pro Wrestling. He wasn't given a lot of opportunities to be a single star there. But whenever he was, he would do a phenomenal job. I think he was. I think he's a phenomenal figure wrestler here. He's been both members of the Lucha Brothers in the past, you know, two three weeks, and so I I'm super pumped for all of that happening. Um, I I hope it doesn't lead any kind of heel turn. I think I think Best Friends and Orange Cassidy is a fantastic combination that I need to see on my TV far more often than I already do. Logan, am I crazy for thinking the more I look at Sean Spears with Tully Blanchard and the more I see a Trent Beretta that it should have been Trent Beretta? He jumps off a screen for me so much more than Spears and has, I feel like, so much more to offer as far as across the board's total package type worker. Uh, I can't disagree. Wow. I don't know. To Sean Spears, in my opinion, and I know he's trying hard, but I got to come clean. He's been a bust. He's been a complete fucking bust. As a heel, yeah. Now, I was thinking the same thing. If he turned face, he'd be great. I just don't think, you know, there's some people who just, they should not be heels, and they shouldn't be heels. And I think, I think Sean Spears, Ty Dillinger, he's, he's a guy who was made to be a baby face. If it doesn't evolve and, and progress for the better Mads, do you think keeping Tully Blanchard with, with Sean Spears is a waste of Tully Blanchard's talents, for Christ's sakes? I would say, I mean, I'd love to see an angle where Tully, you know, dumps Spears for Trent Beretta or just for someone else who could, you know, benefit more. Because I think, I think Sean Spears is, he's good enough at, you know, on the mic and at being a wrestler that he doesn't need anyone to be there. I mean, it works for his heel character, but he doesn't need it to, to be that character. Yeah. Fair. That's very yeah, fair. Fair enough. Ray Phoenix is tremendous. I feel like he gets outshined by uh, Pentagon Jr. I think it's they should showcase him in singles more than Pentagon because you want to get both guys over as much. You want to get every guy over as much as possible. You want to. Why should we care about him? And why or why is this just some guy in fucking Ray Mysterio cosplay? I'll say it. I'll say it as the day is long that Phoenix and Pentagon Jr. were easily in the top three. Uh, best wrestlers in Lucha Underground. They, I don't know if they were ever used as a tag team all that often. Um, they mentioned that they were brothers and that they've done that kind of thing before, but they were both pushed as pretty huge single stars when they were in Lucha Underground, and they did a fantastic job. Pentagon Jr., easily one of the best characters to come from that show. Ray Phoenix, I believe, was the first uh, Grand Slam champion in Lucha Underground, winning all three of the uh, with the trios belt, the um, whatever their mid card belt was, and the Lucha Underground title. You know, they're fantastic singles wrestlers, and they work well as a tag. They're they're a total package, and you can put them anywhere. That's what's so great about Phoenix and about Pentagon Jr. I feel like the Lucha Brothers right now. What I've looked at, we're at an AEW. They've gone down for me as the MVPs, possibly the most underrated guys that have incredibility throughout that, throughout a show. All good? Yeah, you're good. As, have incredibility throughout a show because when you sit through a leave a bait segment followed by yada, 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 and just all this indie feeling shit, it's nice to have both these guys in singles matches because they do. They Even though they've never been on huge stages, they add credibility because of how good they are. Right, and I remember, uh, I believe it was at All In, they're like AEW, well, they weren't AEW at the time, but when Cody Rhodes, you know, took on, I think it was Meltzer's Challenge if they couldn't sell out an arena, blah, 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 when they fucking did, I believe it was Omega versus Pentagon at All In, and that match was one of the best matches on the card. And so already they were establishing the fact that Pentagon Jr. is a phenomenal singles wrestler. Yeah. One of, one of the most over guys in AEW is easily Logan is Pentagon Jr. Yep, I think so. I think he's outshined a lot of guys in the company, and uh, I, but I do like Ray Phoenix. Don't get me wrong. You know what I like about 
every guy we've mentioned, seriously, every guy we've said on this show tonight, you know what I like about all of them when I look at them? At least they look like and sound like and come off to me like they're a fucking pro wrestler. Joey Janela yeah, next with the most goddamn piss poor excuse for any kind of promo can someone tell this fucking jackass who's on three drops of molly that he's on national television and he might want to pick up the fucking pace thank god for john moxley who looked like andre the fucking giant next to him you suck i don't get it you're lucky you got the friends you do you're not even worth me responding even if i did even if i did you pigtail wendy's looking little jersey shore bitch you blocked me like a 15 year old fucking girl bad boy more like the fucking frail boy junkie janella gentlemen what did you think of this promo you stole jesus my name Christ. well there goes there goes that dm i was gonna send to janella about getting him on the show uh that's not gonna happen anytime soon <laughs> thank god for calling because now i'm laughing <laughs> jesus christ uh i don't want to my name he's mother I quit. <laughs> I don't want to talk about everything else in the show, too, but we can talk about that promo really quick. I mean, it, I can't fault it entirely just because I I don't know what it was, but I, I I didn't pay attention to the fucking promo. I'll say it. I I just wasn't – I didn't give a shit at the time. And I noticed when Moxley walked in, and I noticed he was fucking huge over Janela. And I liked it. He was like – kids and then walked away i thought that was fucking hilarious um i think i i think i think you're being a little hard on the man but i mean i i think give it some time and janella could easily be a breakout person in AEW. his face breaks out <laughs> what did you think of this promo mr myers If you liked it, it's okay. I'm not going to cuss anybody out. I'm just venting my uh, opinion on it. I, I, I liked it. Jersey Shore. <laughs> Chunky Janela. Get some Nutella. I hope he's from the Jersey Shore. I'm going to feel like an idiot, by the way. I just kind of guessed. He looks like he's from the Jersey Shore. I think he's from Asbury Park. Same it fucking thing. Same Park. fucking thing. What did you think of this promo, Matt? <laughs> because the greatest wrestler to come from Asbury Park, I've said it. Whoa! I'm kidding. I wanted to rile you up, you miserable bastard. I, I'm off. I'm going to bed. I just wanted to get the blood pumping. Yelling, outlaw mud show, this and that, blah, 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 blah. Go ahead, oh, Matt. Well, you know you can't go that way with me. You know those words are trigger. I know, bless your heart. You go ahead, Mads. This guy's not allowed to talk right now. <laughs> well, you're probably the only one that knows the backstory of all my shenanigans with that dude. Oh, I fucked Jim Cornette. I watched the whole thing. You guys, no, you no. guys can bask in your hate of Jim Cornette together. What are you talking about? You guys have so uh, much more in common now, oh, actually. Okay, I don't know who I'm really talking to. I'm sure I know you guys off, on Twitter, but yeah. Dude, he blocked me on freaking, sorry, this is a caveat to what we're supposed to be talking about, but he blocked me on freaking Thanksgiving. It was a freaking Christmas miracle, or like a Thanksgiving miracle. Like after all the shit people I got put through from that dude, like, well, no, but I, the promo was okay. It wasn't my favorite promo. It wasn't my least favorite promo. Mock saved that kind of coming in there. Being like kids, I laughed like out loud he, he he does talk like a snail pay, like a snail it's like what dude pick up the pace a little bit you know what? When you know, even fucking word. How could I forget after Moxley said "kids" and I liked it and it walked off because I didn't expect that. When he did, Janella fucking just buried himself. He stood there. He didn't do shit. Imagine someone doing that to The Rock or Steve Austin or The Undertaker or even Shawn Michaels, for Christ's sakes, even though he was a chicken shit heel. Any goddamn actual pro wrestler would have done something. Anyway, let's get off of that. I'm tired of yelling. It's late. Colin, what'd you think of, uh, I, I got to tell you, man, I'm a fan of Statliner. Uh, 
I would say, uh, you know, I, I like her Statlanders. Uh, it was definitely, it was hard for me because uh, she was facing uh, Akira Shida, who is another uh, phenomenal wrestler that I'm a big fan of in AEW. Yeah, no, I, I really liked her. I think Chris Statlander might be in, in, in my top three favorites in AEW, just based on the two matches I've seen from her now. Um, I think it's a good match, and I think Statlander getting the uh, kind of the surprise upset victory was a fantastic thing. I, I'm super excited to see what she does. Logan, what you think of uh, Chris Statlander? She's got a different gimmick, and I like it. It's different, and she comes off as a badass, and I also like that. And she put on a phenomenal match, and I did like that set. I feel like Mads, they could book her Charlotte sister. They kind of look pretty much the same, just with one of one puts alien paint on them. Yeah, I liked her. She That was the first time I saw her, and it was pretty cool. I like that gimmick, and hopefully she'll do really well. What was her? Do she? Do people know her from somewhere else? I'm not like very seasoned, on. very seasoned indie worker. Um, tons of experience. Just finally getting a break. Her opponent, obviously, yeah. the. Uh, I was shocked by this outcome. I was completely shocked by the outcome of this match. <laughs> Dare I say the dark horse sleeper match of the night? I didn't hate this match at all. I was into it, and it, it told a nice little story. <laughs> um, Chris Statlander with her little weird tombstone pile driver got the pin on the number one contender Sheeta. Colin. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm super psyched for it. Uh, I'm interested to see, you know, how they react to um, the fact. Who the fuck is outside right now? <laughs> Me. Sorry, I had to go get my dog. <laughs> I'll be back inside in just a minute. We live by the highway, but my dog disappeared, and I gotta go. Come on, you stupid dog. She's at the Jersey Shore. <laughs> it, yeah, the Jersey Shore of Pennsylvania. We all we are the alternative. We we don't edit shit. This is all staying in the show. And we literally I take to it go, to the streets. Yeah, I have to go rescue. Okay, we, sorry, we, guys. That's how all you right. know we're the best podcast because we keep everything real. Logan, the best. Oh, sure. Lo, wait, Logan, the best part is. The Logan, the best part is you heard the door close and then the highway went away. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah, that's the highway you he can hear from the inside of my house. <laughs> Colin, what you were saying. Yeah, no, I, I'm excited to see how this affects the rankings. I'm excited to see, you know, does Kirishita stay the number one contender? Does Statlander take that spot? You know, how is it going to how is it going to affect the whole ranking system that they they've been uh, been using? So yeah, uh, I, but I'm, I was definitely I was definitely behind this victory. Uh, definitely behind Statlander. Super excited to see more of her. There's probably no way in hell I can pull out two promos in my life that close together in one show. I'm just going to do this. Then the lights went out. Brandy Rose and Awesome Kong. My God. Logan, I know you're pretty fired up about this. Uh, I'm trying to refrain from being an asshole, but Brandy Rhodes, you suck more than you suck. That's. I agree. Ooh. I don't like her very much. That's naughty, Logan. <laughs> the, uh, Stick to your day job. The, uh, the thoughts of other co-hosts are not the same as the entire show. Colin. <laughs> just want to just want to throw that out there for when Brandy finally hears me and Travis's call out at the beginning of the, at the beginning of when we started recording the uh, the episode. God. And he eventually shuts us down. As long as one of us doesn't shit on her the entire time, then maybe we'll be safe. God damn it, Colin. God damn it. Go I'm ahead. trying to keep us on the air, Travis. Do, do, go ahead. Why did you like it, Colin? Oh, no. I, no, I, I, no, I, no, I, 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 I Logan, you wish you could. Anyway, <laughs> I think the whole Nightmare Collective, the whole thing, like I said, there's, there's just too many fucking dark gimmicks. I mean, I like the pairing of Brandy Rhodes and Awesome Kong. I, I want to see more of them. I just want them to be doing something different. I, I think the haircutting thing is, it's interesting. It's its different in that sense, for sure. Um, but, yeah, I, well, I, I'm interested to see if Statlander and Awesome Kong becomes a, a thing. I don't know, because, I mean, she didn't seem, I thought she was going to join with them at first. And then uh, from the crowd, we had, um, uh, someone volunteer. It, it Sonya Deville. It, it, it came off to me as an exact fucking. Uh, it was like almost the clone of the fucking straight, straight edge. 
when when Serena joined the whole thing. Uh, the rest oh, of the question about Melanie Cruz. She was um, she she's a pretty decent uh, indie wrestler. She wrestles around the Chicago area. Uh, I believe she wrestles in Resistance uh, Wrestling. Um, so I mean, she's not unknown. I have no idea if she's going to stay in AEW. I don't know if she signed or she play. This is gonna. She's joining now, but it it comes off as too much of like a a straight edge society type thing. For me, so I mean, like I said, I'm I'm fine with them being together. It just they got to switch it up a little bit. It uh-huh. it it comes off as everything they kind of promised not to be Mads when AW first started. How does that work? Yeah, before and like sat stood up at like the box seats and like stood and stared at him. Colin yeah. is Jake Hager's gimmick at this point. Uh, women's high school volleyball coach. Yep. What was he? I, I mean, what was I don't he know wearing? What the fuck doing at this point, but yeah, pretty much sums it up there too. It was like an <laughs> all maroon fucking deal, pants matching. Yeah, it was like a pants suit, not even a suit, just like a track suit, maroon track suit. I, I shouldn't have yelled. I'm sorry. Who? I don't know. Jake Hager? Yeah. I'm trying to be Jake Hager. Oh, wait. I shouldn't talk. Has he spoke at all? I'm glad you said it so I didn't have to. I guess that's about it, guys. That about wraps up Dynamite? Yes. Yeah. I'm the bodyguard. Madsen, look at... I don't even know what's happening. is the breakout star. Big daddy dino. I, <laughs> That's I, what I call it. Either way, I want to thank spoke. I want to thank Logan and Mads for coming on in this marathon episode. Uh, one more time, Logan. Where can everyone catch you? You guys can check me out on Twitter at Logan Myers one four four. Check me out on Future Entertainment F O W. Zero hours. The next stop. Mads, again, thank you for returning to the channel. Hopefully have you on special soon. One more time, where can anyone catch you on Twitter? Um, at ClaymoreTrick95 and at Instagram at ClaymoreTrick22. Colin Balboa over there training, eating raw meat, fired up. Don't run with the Balboa and Jesus. Where can... I, I'm training so I can eventually fly to the East Coast and kick Blum's ass. Wait. Uh, it won't be too hard to reach. Anyways, uh, yeah, you can follow me on Twitter at Orange uh, Always uh, tweet about wrestling there. You can check me out uh, right here on the BGGMB channel. And you can buy that jacket where? At Target. 50% off. Yes, sir. 50% off. Use code. This is a This is a real. Well, I like it. Tension in the air is damn real. Just like me on Twitter at the Hibiki TMD. That little red button down below hit it. All the best retro gaming and pro wrestling. This, so much more. Official Hibiki TMD merch. Union smacked up bigcartel.com. Catch me and Drew sporadically for now, but still nonetheless. ProWrestlingJournal.com. All the goodness. Until then, another packed week right here. The alternative. See you then.